Jumping into the number five spot of the best ultra budget ATX PC cases is the Aerocool Cyclone, coming in at a price tag of $49.99. If you want to check out any of the five cases in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's jump into it. The design here is definitely interesting. One's built, this actually has some really nice design elements considering the price point. While you do get that solid front panel with not the greatest airflow, you do get a very large RGB element, which looks great considering the price point again. The left side is modern looking due to the acrylic side panel being slightly tinted and reaching all the way down to the bottom, having just the feet showing after that acrylic side panel. I do like that element. But again, remember, this is an acrylic, not a tempered glass side panel. Now, the parts I don't like are the rounded top edges, which feel kind of generic to me. And the bend and break tabs instead of the screw in, screw out removable tabs for your GPU IO, that's not the greatest. You do have to kind of bend those and break them, which is kind of cheapy, but again, this is in that price point. Now, as for the IO, it's good, but what you would expect. You have your power button, mic and headphone inputs, two USB 2.0s and one USB 3.0 as well as, interestingly enough, a full-size SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. Now, me personally, since I do video work, I actually really, really like that, but for most of you, well, you probably won't care, but yeah, it's there. Then on the top of the front panel, there is a LED button to cycle through those RGB modes for that front RGB strip. And I will say the front RGB strip, I mean, as you can see on video, uh, it looks really nice. Now as for colors, this is the only colorway that it does come in. So there's no white option here. All right, we continue talking about price value. Let's talk about included fans and RGB. Well, you already know about that front RGB strip. So obviously that's included. Now included fans here, there's just not very many. This only comes with one non-RGB 120 20 millimeter fan, you're not getting a whole lot of case fans. So some of the other ones on this list that are more expensive might be better for you depending on your outlook on building a case. If you want very specific fans, well then this one makes a lot of sense because it's only 50 bucks. All right, now let's talk about the performance. Let's talk about sound, temperatures, and everything like that. Now, firstly, while not under any lows, it's just normal desktop usage, from 12 inches away, this was hitting 33.6 decibels. Under load, this goes up to 36.9 decibels. This was gaming for over 20 minutes, just leaving it in auto in terms of how it's gonna spool up and spool down those fans. And this is with four 120 millimeter fans and a 240 millimeter AIO with two fans on that radiator. And this is going to be basically the same build across the board. Now with all the fans turned up to max RPM, so ultimate cooling, this was hitting 48 decibels. Now overall sound like, yeah, when it's fully cranked up, it's fairly loud, but under normal load, this is fairly quiet and pretty good. Now after 20 minutes of gameplay, the internal temperature never thermal throttled, nothing ever happened. Overall, the thermals were really good, and that is without a top-mounted fan. So I didn't end up mounting a fan on either an exhaust or an intake fan on the top there. So you could even get much better airflow just from adding that. But as far as with our setup, we didn't need it. I believe an RX 6600 or an RX 6700, that's what we used for all of the tests. If it couldn't fit a 6700 XT, then we went to an RX 6600, which I think is pretty in line with what you guys are probably going to be getting something around that in terms of heat production and things like that. Now, as for the ease of build, this is definitely not the easiest or the best beginner first build case. Once fully built, I think this is honestly a pretty good case, especially considering the price point, but some of the cable management is kind of awful. Firstly, this is a fairly narrow case, which gives very little room behind the back panel meaning that if you have a lot of fans, accessories, AIO cables, you're really going to have to work to get that back panel on if you're not really conscious about your cable management. Now, as for the cable management around the motherboard itself, this is obviously with using an ATX motherboard. On the bottom and the right side, they're great and fine, and they're honestly quite easy to get in and out of and access things, especially the bottom of the motherboard. Even with a large PSU, this is quite easy to manage and fit larger cables through. However, where this is ridiculously bad is the top and left with the motherboard already in installed, it is incredibly difficult to fit an 8-pin PCIe cable through that hole. Forget doing two cables if your motherboard requires it for like overclocking and things like that. The only way you can do this is pre-feed your cables and then install your motherboard if they had just extended the whole length of it 
it would have been a little bit better because those holes are absolutely ridiculous. You literally have to pre-feed cables. In my opinion, if you've already built a case, it's not a deal breaker. You know what you're getting into. Now, as for space, especially for your GPU, with a Radeon RX 6700 XT and an AIO mounted in the front, I have about an inch and a half of space. That's actually really, really good. And this was very impressive, honestly, because a lot of the other ones on the list actually don't do this. The 6700 XT is the size of most of your bigger graphics cards, like RTX 4090. Overall, even with a front-mounted AIO and a push-pull configuration, so I have those front case fans, the radiator, and then sandwiched with another set of fans pulling that air out, this is giving you about 12 and a half, a little bit more, inches of space here. That is really, really good. All right, but now let's talk fan and radiator compatibility. For fan compatibility, you can have three 120 millimeters on the front. There is no compatibility for 140 millimeter fans anywhere on this case. You then can put two 120 millimeter fans on the bottom underneath the GPU, which I think was a nice touch for the price of this case. One rear exhaust fan, again, 120 millimeters, and then one top mounted 120 millimeter fan. Overall, it's a good setup, especially considering you can put a full size GPU in there. Now, as for radiator compatibility, you can fit a 240 millimeter radiator exclusively on the front, while a 360 millimeter would fit in, the third fan could not fit on the bottom location. So you're gonna have to go with a 240 millimeter radiator on the front of the case or a 120 millimeter radiator on the top of the case. One thing to note is that my Corsair radiator is longer than the standard two 120, 120 millimeter fans. It does have that excess on the top and bottom. This does vary by manufacturer. Some are longer, some are shorter. And with a fan below the radiator on the top, it really doesn't fit and it's pushing the IO out. So definitely check your radiator if you wanna do similar build and make sure it is a little bit shorter. If it only matches two 120 millimeter fans, which isn't very common, but it's gonna to fit totally fine. But if it's bigger than that, you might run into some issues. All right, now for SSD and hard drive mounts. There are two SSD mounting locations in the back, as well as one inside the main part of the case. And as for hard drive mounts, there is a hard drive bay with two pullout slots for those three and a half inch hard drives. Overall, if you can get this thing below 55 bucks, maybe if it's on sale, and you want all of those fan mounting locations, you'd like the front RGB and are okay with a little bit more struggling with how you build this due to the cable management, I think once it's built, this is a very attractive and well-performing case, even with a solid front panel. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which is the Antec AX61, coming in at a price tag of $79.99. Now, the prices that I'm telling you are the list price. Check the links below because most of these are on sale pretty regularly. So that price definitely does fluctuate. So check the links below for current pricing. The design here definitely cuts some corners in terms of cost, but the overall design comes out great in spite of this. The side glass panel is not tinted, so you can see all of those RGBs brightly, which they cut cost on by not giving you a dark border, so you can still see directly onto the screws and metal on the outside of that glass, if that makes sense. There's just no dark border, but honestly, I'm fine with it. The front panel has an asymmetrical design, which I wasn't too sure about online, but after being built, I think it looks great. The mesh is a nice touch and the other design elements aren't too in your face. This is something I really like for a more budgety case, which sometimes can just be a little bit too loud. As for the IO, there is one USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0s, then a mic and headphone jack. As for colors, this is the only colorway. It's only available in black. For included fans, this comes with four 120 millimeter RGB fans with three pre-installed on the front and one installed on the rear. That's huge. That's a lot of fans that you already have included. If you're only gonna be using an AIO, you might not even need to get any other fans depending on your build. That's that's huge. That's saving you a lot of money. All right, now talking about sound levels. While not under any load from 12 inches away, this was hitting 42.3 decibels. Under load, this goes up to 51.2 decibels. Again, this is from 12 inches away, so a little bit closer than you'd actually be. And with all fans turned up to max RPM, this was hitting 53.4 decibels. This is a little bit louder, but you also do get great airflow because you do have that mesh front panel. Now after 20 minutes of gameplay, all fans on full, this reached a max internal temperature of 44.9 degrees Celsius. That's pretty dang good. Nothing was thermal throttling. We had no difference in change of performance in game. Overall, it did very well. All right, now let's talk about cable management here because it could be a little bit better. Above the motherboard, there is only one hole. So your CPU cables, fan cables, AIO cables all have to be routed through there. This can get a bit tight, but still far better than the previous one. You can still fit all of your cables through 
with the motherboard already installed. So that's already a big benefit here, but I would have liked, you know, the standard two holes above the motherboard. At the bottom of the motherboard, there's not too much space between the PSU shroud and the PSU itself, making it difficult to get cables up to the motherboard. So ease of build here is a little bit more challenging, but once built is good. Now this can be remedied pretty easily by just feeding all of your uh, IO cables and your other USBs and fan headers and things like that into the motherboard before you install the PSU and then you're pretty much good. Then you install the PSU, plug in the things that you need to plug in and you're pretty much good to go. But definitely something to note here. All right, let's talk about space, especially for your GPU. With that AIO mounted in a push-pull configuration, like I'm doing with all of these cases, this doesn't give you enough space for larger graphics card. This is only giving you about 11 and a half inches of space with the larger graphics cards, like the 4080 and 4090, and even the RX 6700 XT and above, depending on who you get it from, is about like a foot of space you're gonna need. So this is just shy of what you would need, but again, if you don't have that AIO mounted in the front, or even if you don't have the AIO mounted in a push-pull configuration, but just took off those fans on the inside of that radiator, well, you're gonna fit bigger GPUs. But in my configuration, that's what it is. Now let's talk about compatibility here. On the front, you can fit up to three 120 millimeters, then either two 120 or 140 millimeters on the top, a 120 millimeter on the back, and then two 120s underneath that GPU. Now as for radiator compatibility, you can fit up to a 360 on the front or up to a 240 or 280 on the top. Now as for hard drive mounts, there is one removable hard drive bay with two mounting locations and obviously as a three and a half inch hard drive. Overall, if you're not a first time case builder or don't mind having to take a little bit more time to cable manage or have smaller spaces to work in, this is a very attractive looking case with fan compatibility below the GPU, which you know I love, not just functionally, but also aesthetically. It just looks great. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which is a case from Montec. This is the X3 Mesh, coming in at a price tag of $69.99. While the design here is fairly basic for an airflow case, this has some nice elements like the full glass side panel and cutouts for your PSU that can be seen through the glass. This is really nice if you do have like an RGB PSU, well, there you go. The front mesh panel has these geometric shapes in it, which give it some flair and airflow on the right and left sides as well as the front. So you're getting a ton of airflow here. The glass side panel is also on hinges, so it is very easy to get in and out of your case just by opening it and closing it. This is something I love, and I don't know how a lot of you feel about the hinge design, but I absolutely love it, especially if you're gonna be living with one PC for a long time. It's so easy to just go in there, fix something, and shut the glass. So nice. All right, now top IO here is honestly not my favorite by a long shot. The power button is small and you almost have to reach into the button and push it and it just feels really cheap and budgety. You also have two USB type A 2.0s and only one USB type A 3.0. You have a mic and headphone jack as well as a button to turn on and off the LEDs of the stock fans. None of the buttons here really feel that great, but that's not a deal breaker because I still really like this case. As for the colors here, this is actually available in either black or white. Included fans here is one of the biggest reasons that you're going to buy this case. The value due to having a whopping three 140 millimeter fans on the front and three other included 120 millimeter fans that all have RGB, this makes this a really awesome value. For around 70 bucks, that's not on sale. If this does go on sale, it's an even greater value. You can get in and fully build this case without having to buy any fans at all and you're still gonna have RGB on every single one of those fans. Now, while these aren't gonna be the greatest, most airflow fans in the whole world, what you are gonna get as a benefit is that you have a lot of fans. And for most of you, if you're not building a super beefy rig, this is gonna be enough and that's what we saw. But before talking about the temperature, let's talk about the sound because this was great. While not under any load from 12 inches away, this was hitting 35.6 decibels. That's really, really quiet. So just in typical desktop use, very, very quiet. I was really impressed with this. Under load playing some games, this only goes up to 36 and a half decibels. Again, very good. And with all fans turned up to max RPM, this was hitting 41.2 decibels. That's really good. I mean, that's very, very quiet for full on gaming. Now, again, this probably is due to the, the RPMs of these fans doesn't just ramp up a ton, but after over 20 minutes of gameplay, this reached max internal temperatures of 45.9 degrees Celsius. So nothing thermal throttle, nothing's over heating. Overall, I have no complaints here and that makes this a really great value. Cable management here is great. The case is taller than your average ATX case and slightly less deep. This makes for cable management on the top and the bottom extremely accessible. 
even with the top mounted fans, you still have plenty of space to work with above your motherboard. This is pretty rare for budget cases. So even if you have those top fans mounted, you're still gonna be able to get in your CPU eight pin PCIe cable. Like that's not really that common with cases that cost this much. The only negative side here is that it looks a little funny with a decent amount of space above that motherboard, but honestly, once it's built, you don't really notice it. Overall though, this is a great first case to start in and is a very easy one to build. One thing to note is that the PSU only has screws for the downward mounted PSU. So the fan on your power supply has to go down. There is no mounting holes for it to go up. That is, just one thing to note. Now, as far as space with an AIO in the front with a push-pull arrangement, I use the smaller RX 6600. As with that AIO, this only gave me about 11 inches and I need about 12 inches. So if you do have those bigger GPUs, like up to a like 4090, uh, you will have enough space, but not with the AIO and that push-pull configuration. You'll probably need to mount your AIO on the top, which you can definitely do. It's not a big deal. And if you do that, well, then you have plenty of space there. Okay, but let's talk fan compatibility. You can either use three 120 millimeters or three 140 millimeters on the front. That is awesome. Two 120 millimeters or two 140 millimeters on the top and then a 120 millimeter rear exhaust fan. Then you also get two 120 millimeters under the GPU. This is great for those bigger 140 millimeter fans. That makes a huge difference here. Now, as for radiator compatibility, this is what's actually really great. Because of that taller design, you can fit basically anything you want on the front all the way up to a 360 or 420 millimeter radiator. That's right you could fit a ginormous radiator on this. You probably wouldn't do that because you might wanna get a more expensive case if you have the money to do that, but the fact that you can is awesome. And again, you might not have space for your bigger GPU, so let's talk about the top, which might be very important here. You can either fit a 240 or 280 millimeter radiator on the top. So still, if you wanna do a bigger GPU and do a 280 on the top, that's gonna to be a great layout, especially with those 140s on the front giving you plenty of airflow for a bigger GPU. Now as for SSD mounts, there are two two and a half inch mounting locations with two removable brackets on the rear and one removable three and a half inch hard drive bay with two mounting locations. So overall, pretty good. Overall, I really like the form factor being taller, allowing for a really easy building process, as well as this being a very quiet case with still great airflow for the price with all those included fans. This is a fantastic ultra budget case to build in. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which is the NZ ZXT H510 Flow coming in at a price tag of $89.99. This is the most expensive case on the list, but it's also really, really well premium feeling. This doesn't feel like a budget case at all. To me, this is the best looking on the list. Its design is modern. The squared off edges make this look very sleek. The white colorway looks great. And for the price, this gives you the most unique and special looking accents, like the non-generic looking front mesh panel. All of the panels also have stay in thumb screws, which is something that none of the others have at this price point. The one thing I will say is while this does look very nice and it is very premium for the price, everyone has used this case. So it's kind of like a Tesla Model 3. Everyone has one now. They're really, really cool and they work really well, but you see them everywhere. So that is one thing to think about. Now, top IO is a joke. You only get one USB type A and one USB type C and then a headphone jack. Now as for colors, this either comes in black or white. That's really nice. Now as for concluded fans, this comes with two non-RGB 120 millimeter fans that I chose not to use because, well, I wanted RGB, but that is one thing to note. This case gets significantly more expensive because you don't have a lot of included fans here. So not only is the most expensive, but then you have to add fans and then, well, the price hikes up from there with the Montec probably being the most value friendly because of all of those case fans. All right, but let's talk about sound. While not under any load from 12 inches away, this was hitting 31.6 decibels. That's very good. Under load, this goes up to 39.3 decibels from 12 inches away. And with all fans turned to max, this is hitting 48.1 decibels. This is overall very good. This is impressive. And if you're worried about it being too loud, this won't be a problem. It really balances 
good performance with good overall sound isolation still being an airflow case. Now that being said, this did run a little bit hotter, still not into dangerous territory or where it's thermal throttling, but after 20 minutes of gameplay, this did hit 50.3 degrees Celsius. That's not too high at all, but it is definitely something to note. Now cable management and ease of build is one of the best on the list. Cable cutouts near the top of the motherboard is just a single super long, huge cutout, which just works so well. And it's something that like all cases should do. It, it's stupid easy to manage things. And the white accent cable hiding metal piece looks really great and is very functional, giving you tons of room. The same story is at the bottom of the motherboard. At the rear, there are cable channels for easy cable management, which makes this an absolute breeze to build in. And if you are a beginner, this is really, really enjoyable for, well, again, both beginners and experienced builders alike. Now let's talk about space for that GPU. Again, with the AIO and that push-pull configuration, I was able to get a full-size GPU you in at about a foot of length with a little bit less than half of an inch of space before hitting the fans of that radiator. So space here is just not going to be an issue. Again, that's in a push-pull configuration. So if you have the AIO mounted with just, you know, your fans and the radiator, well, you're gonna have even more space. So I wouldn't even worry about space at all with this case. That's something that's awesome. All right, now fan compatibility. This can either take two 120 millimeters or two 140 millimeters on the front, either a 120 or 140 on the top and a 120 on the rear. You could definitely jerry-rig some fans underneath the GPU as the holes there would be pretty easy to get some screws through. So definitely keep that in mind, but it's not like officially compatible, but I mean, you can for sure add some beneath there. As for radiator compatibility, you can either do a 120 on the top or a 240 or 280 on the front. You're not gonna get anything bigger because of that overall design. Now, one thing to note here is that in my push-pull configuration with my 240 millimeter radiator, I had to leave off one of the fans on the inside because that cool like designy metal piece that hides the cables well, that got in the way. So you definitely can take that off, but again, it's not gonna hide the cable management. And I personally think it's a really cool design element inside of it. But again, if you're not doing a push-pull configuration, it's not gonna matter. Overall, this is definitely the most premium ultra budget case and it's a fantastic first build and very enjoyable to cable manage. But it does come in at a higher price point as you will need to buy your own fans as it only comes with two. But with that, let's move on to the number one spot, which is the Dark Flash DLC 29, coming in at a price tag of $75.99. The design here is very unique and I really, really like it. There are no glass side panels and on four sides, this is all mesh being a very airflowy design. So thermals here are gonna be great. Another benefit here is that you don't have to go RGB and you can have a more low key case design. This means you'll save a lot of money on fans, RAM, and other components that you don't need to worry about how they look. That can be huge. If you're all about performance, but still want a cool looking case, well, this solves both of those problems. But if you do decide to go RGB like I did for this build, in the light, you can't really see into the case, but at night or in the dark, it shows the inside of the case, which is a very cool effect. Now, one last thing to mention is that all the panels and all pieces basically are metal. There is no plastic on the front panel or anything like that. So the case overall does feel just very high quality. As for IO, there's two USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, and then a mic headphone port. As for colors, this is either available in black or white. Now, one con here is that there are no included fans at all. There's definitely a con that you will need to buy your own fans, but I think for the overall look of this, I just, I really like it. All right, now for sound levels. While not under any load from 12 inches away, this was hitting 39 decibels, which yeah, you get it because it's super airflowy. Under load, this goes up to 40.7 decibels from 12 inches away. And with all fans turned to max, this was hitting 50.7 decibels. So yes, definitely on the louder end. And this is going to change depending on the type of fans that you use. The benefit here is that even if you go with some of the nicest non-RGB fans, you're gonna be spending not that much when comparing to RGB fans. So there's definitely some benefits that I really like about this case. Okay, now as for thermals, after 20 minutes of gameplay with all fans at full, this reached a max internal temperature of 47.8 degrees Celsius. So overall good thermals, you'd probably be even better depending on your fan choices, especially with those non-RGB fans that could be fantastic. But let's talk about ease of build here. This is as easy as the NZXT. While the NZXT had better cable management in the back, this has fantastic large openings with space above the motherboard for cables even with top mounted fans already installed. There's also plenty of room on the bottom and the right side of the motherboard, as well as a hole for your GPU cable. There's also a ton of room on the back panel. So if you aren't into cable management, this is pretty easy to just put the back panel on without having to struggle bunching up a bunch of your cables. 
Overall, this is a really enjoyable build as well as being very, very easy to do. All right, but let's talk space with an AIO mounted and a push-pull configuration. You've heard it a thousand times. I did use the smaller RX 6600 instead of the 6700 as this almost fit the larger GPU at 11 and a half inches of clearance. However, if you choose not to do that push-pull configuration, but still put your radiator on the front, well, this is gonna fit your larger GPUs. You'd have about a foot and a half of space still with that radiator mounted in the front. This means you can use all of like the 4090s and anything you want. So that is great. As for fan compatibility in the front, you can either have three 120s, three 140s, or on the top, you can either fit two 120s or two 140s. I love that you can get those 140s in without losing fans. And then you get a 120 millimeter exhaust fan. Now for radiator compatibility, you can either go up to a 360 or even 420 millimeter on the front. And on the top, you can either do a 240 or 280. Now as for SSD mounts, there are two two and a half inch mounting locations with a removable bracket on the rear and two two and a half inch mounting locations on the right side of the inside of the case. As for hard drive mounts, there is one removable three and a half inch hard drive bay with two mounting locations. Overall, this is my favorite ultra budget case. It's classy, understated, and highly configurable with great performance and ease of build. Again, if you wanna check out any of the five cases in this video, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links. And if maybe you wanna check out a little bit more premium, but still budget, maybe in that hundred to hundred and thirty dollar price range well check out this video right there those are also atx builds but in the budget instead of the ultra budget price category but yeah this is a consumer tech review and i'll see you guys in the next video